going to answer the question you've all been asking. Why does Decoded hate white people? Well, we don't. Oh, look at the like to dislike ratio. This is going to be good. There's overwhelming evidence that implicit racial bias is real. Mind showing us the evidence? And institutional racism is still rampant in America and abroad today. Sorry to break it to you, but it's not, so you can stop whining. Whoa, okay, talking about oppression doesn't mean I hate white people. You always talk about how white people are oppressing black people in a systematic manner. You don't hate the people who apparently oppress you then? The problem is it's hard to get mad at systems and institutions instead of taking these conversations personally. You are assuming we all act, feel, and think the same. You are implying the systems were at fault in the first place, and that is where you are incorrect. When I criticize the school to prison pipeline, lack of police training, Lack of police training? They train long and hard to get their job, and not only that, but police officers in places such as Wisconsin have bias training class to prevent such bias. But you wouldn't notice because all you care about is your own foolish agenda. In workplace discrimination or our court system, some people don't want to hear it or think about it. Let's use preschool for example. In a study done by the Department of Education, black children make up 18% of the preschool population, but represent almost half of all out of school suspensions. Basically, while a misbehaving white toddler might get time out, a black toddler is more likely to get sent home and have disciplinary action on their record. Let's take a look here at the parents who raise the kids. Black people are also about 11 to 13 percent of the population and commit around 50 percent of violent crimes. Seeing a little bit of a correlation here. What does that say to you? For journalists who investigate these kinds of stats, they reach the conclusion that these suspensions are tied to teacher bias. In other words, teachers are more likely to see black children as threats to their classroom rather than just kids being kids. You are interpreting the statistics in an extremely incorrect way. You are assuming that the kids did the exact same thing that was considered wrong. And always remember, all toddlers are monsters. This is a huge problem. Does it mean that all of these preschool teachers are racist? Not explicitly so, but they have bias, just like all of us. Again, another misinterpretation of the data. Well, you see, there is no actual evidence to show that what you are saying is in undeniably correct, nor is there that it's saying that it isn't but you're essentially claiming that yours is correct just because, oh, I thought of it, so it must be correct. And fixing this is even more complicated. I never see any real bias being shown in classrooms, and I'm still in school, not encountering any. Including allocating tons of money towards teacher training, child care resources, and a million other things. It does not take money to treat kids equally. So, let's check in with your feelings. Are you A, mad at the Department of Education for not training teachers better, B, mad at your state congressional representatives for not pushing for bigger education budgets, or C, mad at me for talking about this because it's easier to direct your anger towards someone making you feel guilty instead of being angry at the complicated as f world of institutional racism. Are you mad at the fake garbage claims I presented to you? Or are you mad at me for making them up? Is a much more accurate way to state this. In addition, who said I felt guilty in the first place? You're interpreting data in, in a way that's so ridiculous that a monkey would have trouble not cracking a grin. If you chose C, please resist the urge to close your browser and instead keep listening. Hmm, <laughs> we won't stop watching, trust us, this is fucking gold. You might have noticed, nowhere in there did I say white people are the problem. Well, you didn't say it, but you're constantly implying that white people are oppressing you. You claim it's institutional racism, which you're saying is made by white people. I mean, or else, your claims would be fun fundamentally flawed in that sense, if this was not implied, you know. Because if you take the example of when you said that teachers have bias towards black children, well, remember, um, what, what skin color, uh, according to your logic, must that supposed teacher have? Oh, they're white! Oh, right, you racist scumbag. So, of course, you didn't say it, but I'd bet my life that's what you think. That's because these issues are bigger than individuals. It's going to take all of us to advocate for change. So, the next time you have the urge to say, Francesca hates white people, please autocorrect to, Francesca hates the historical roots of oppression that have led to today's societal conditions which allow institutions with white leadership to systemically discriminate against people of color. Oh, I forgot to say, by white people. 
Easy peasy. It's clear that people who get mad about discussions of racism aren't actually listening to the criticisms. They aren't hearing the facts and stats. They aren't even directly disagreeing with research. You are making claims and not providing the evidence that can prove it, and you are misinterpreting data. Instead, they're disagreeing with the sentiment, things are bad for people of color and we need change. Why? Well, Dr. Robin D'Angelo, a white critical racial and social justice scholar, social, social justice scholar, <laughs> oh, that's, 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 that's a great one. What does he study? Stuff from 50 years ago? Ugh. The only thing the dude probably does is make evidence that could, oh, well, I'm going to support the SJW cause. You know, got to support the cause to fight social injustices. Has described the discomfort some white people have towards talking about racism as white fragility. Since white people often grow up in environments where discussing race is seen as taboo, some react defensively when the topic of racism comes up. They are being correct by not talking about it because it is not something that matters at all, and almost every white family knows it. But apparently FGWs like you don't understand that not acknowledging race will make race basically stop existing. Dr. D'Angelo says this manifests itself as outward displays of emotions, such as anger, fear, and guilt, and behaviors such as argumentation, silence, and leaving the stress-inducing situation. I'd also add aggressively clogging someone's at replies on Twitter that list, but that's neither here nor there. Was that, was that supposed to be a joke? Was that a joke? <laughs> to complete it, that one, decoded, more like encoded in the format R4C15M. I mean, I could even spell it out on the screen for you if you want. I mean, she. Do what's ridiculous is she doesn't even understand why everyone hates her, whether they're white or black. But all she needs to do is look in the description and click the link and maybe take a read at the damn comments. I mean, they they'll spell it out for her. They upload this literally just for controversy so they can get views. <laughs> it's also hard to think about these issues on an institutional level. And because talking about racism automatically makes a lot of white people uncomfortable, they sometimes begin to think they're being personally attacked or blamed. Why, you wonder? It's because you're blaming us. And by us, I mean what you call white people and what we simply think are people. Oh, and guess what? You fall, regrettably, even with logic worse than a caterpillar's, into that category. Hooray! Race doesn't matter to us. If you're a cunt, you're a cunt. And I'm not ashamed to tell you, you're just an absolute cunt. Recent studies show that white Americans believe bias against white people is a bigger issue in our country than ever before. This, however, is simply not true. Statistically, from mortgage lending to police brutality, the reality for white Americans tends to be way more positive than for black Americans and other people of color. So don't be mad at me, be mad at the stats. Look at the stats. The stats made up in your T-Rex brain and pulled out of your fucking ass. Those stats? Oh yeah, sure, if they were credible. A classic example is the bias associated with drug use. White people use drugs at similar rates as black people, but black people are much more likely to go to jail for drug usage because of the way we structure our policing practices. Are you going to provide evidence for a change? Let's see here. There's even bias in the political language we use to describe the issue. Nope, you just state bad claims and expect us to think that it's true because you're stating it as an insignificant point that should just be considered true. In the 80s, when crack became a huge problem, we had the war on drugs. But now with the prescription meds epidemic, which is largely affecting white communities, we're actually calling it what it is, an opioid epidemic. But when these issues are brought up, too often people accuse us of bias against white people. By refusing to engage with the actual issues, the people who shout the absurd accusation, you're racist against white people, are really just attempting to shut down the conversation. You are literally saying white people and generalizing billions of people. And not only that, but you're implying white people are the source of your problems and everything was made by white people. Imagine if we were able to talk about these issues without a mob of angry replies. Or what if people were angry at oppression instead of the people talking about oppression? Or if the discussions were about what policies were needed and what our political leaders could do to help kids stay in school and prevent citizens from being murdered by the police. They are telling you to stop labeling them and generalizing them. Imagine if people who think I'm racist against white people found something they enjoyed online instead of watching Decoded every week and complaining in the comments. You don't understand what the other side is saying and it proves your closed-mindedness. 
they're saying it isn't an issue in the first place, not that we shouldn't fix it if it was. And look, no matter who you are, these conversations can be difficult. Acknowledging your privilege is difficult. I'll acknowledge it once you prove it's a thing, rather than claiming it without providing evidence that actually supports your claim, rather than evidence that has so many other factors involved that could account for it, to the point where it's about as reasonable as the idea of a legitimate wage gap between a man and a woman for the exact same job. And accepting that the world isn't fair to everyone sucks. But the most important things are often the hardest ones to do. Thanks so much for watching. We don't hate anybody. You hate white people, whether you like to say it to our faces or not. You're clearly generalizing what you claim are white people, making claims that we all have privilege, which, um, last I checked, we don't. We have homeless people, we have, uh, many people in rural areas that have no opportunity whatsoever, and yet you have the audacity to claim that all of us have privilege? Wow. You are so close-minded. I hope you guys enjoyed our first response video ever, responding to that racist piece of shit we call MTV. <laughs> we wanted to try video just having fun, pointing out the stupid things in MTV's terrible series that they like to call Decoded. And we'll use more logic and facts next time. We just wanted to have a lot of fun with this one, with the insults and whatnot. So make sure to leave a like if you liked it, dislike if you didn't, you know. Uh, subscribe if you want to check out the rest of our uh, channel, and leave a comment letting us know what your thoughts on this entire video is. So, thanks for watching, and goodbye.